I am uh, James Hilliard. I'm uh, a software developer and um, mining farm uh, operator with uh, MyRig. Um, we and I'm going to be going over some uh, details of how Bitcoin mining works, such as uh, mining pools, uh, stratum, and um, the various pool payout methods, and some uh, some of the attack vectors uh, that uh, could potentially be issues for the Bitcoin network. Um, so first of all, Stratum Protocol is uh, was originally developed by Slush to replace the Getwork Protocol, which was um, it was previously built into Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin Core. I don't think it was called Bitcoin Core back then, but. Uh, uh, Getwork had some limitations, um, the main one being that the more hash power you had, the more bandwidth you, uh, your miner, the more hash power your miner had, the more bandwidth you needed. So you'd need to, uh, you'd need to basically request um, uh, work uh, more often if you, say, had a lot, a much more powerful miner. So pretty much by the time ASICs were becoming popular, um, Getwork was obsolete and pretty much unusable. So um, uh, Stratum was the replacement. And it was based off of the Electrum Wallet Sync protocol and um, pretty with pretty minor modifications. Um, it's a fairly straightforward um, uh, JSON RPC over TCP, um, just line-based protocol, uh, so um, streaming protocol. It's um, not typically, uh, it's typically just raw TCP, so you can actually um, just like open Telnet even to a, a mining pool and um, send and receive using that. Um, and Stratum Protocol, uh, the main difference between uh, it and Getwork is it and it allows the miner to essentially locally generate the uh, the work that you would normally have that you would have to get from the pool um, uh, for Getwork. So it's giving you a template basically uh, to do local Getwork effectively. Um, and this allows uh, this uh, template allows basically a unlimited amount of hash power on a single connection um, with the same bandwidth. Um, uh, Stratum was sort of a protocol uh, that was um, uh, developed very quickly. Um, so there's uh, it's one of, it's defined by implementations in that. Um, most of uh, the documentation um, will correspond with what CG Miner and other de facto um, and other clients use. Okay, let's see here. All right, so um, these are some links to the uh, Stratum documentation. That the first one's the, a link to uh, CK's uh, Stratum documentation, which I'm going to take some examples from in the following few slides. Um, and then there's Sluss's uh, documentation. Um, CK's is probably the most complete. He also links to Sluss's and some others, like BTC Guilds. Uh, well, their website's down, but you can, um, I think he copy pasted it into the thread. Okay. Oops. This is like jumping ahead. Okay. All right. So when a uh, the first thing a uh, a miner uh, when connecting up to a pool is going to do is it's going to issue a mine uh, subscribe, and this is going to uh, result in a, a response being returned with the difficulty, and uh, the difficulty can be um, adjusted. Uh, this is how basically we're. Uh, the bandwidth uh, usage can be um, tweaked by the pool so that no matter how much hash power a single miner has, um, the share rate, the amount of shares being submitted per second, um, will be roughly the same. And pools are typically targeting something like uh, 18 uh, 
18, 20 um, shares per minute or so, so every few seconds. But it's it can be customized. Some pools will let you uh, set that uh, manually. So the subscription details um, uh, are just a, it's gonna give you a notification um, which will contain uh, a subscription ID. I um, mean, the subscription ID is just used to identify um, effectively that particular miner on for, uh, by the pool. Um, let's see. And it also give us our extra notch one um, and our extra notch two size. And it's giving the extra notch two. It's not giving an extra notch two because it's. Uh, the miner is able to um, change that. So that's how the miner is able to generate work um, uh, locally is by uh, using that extra nonce uh, two space um, and just varying uh, uh, and varying that value. So that'll give you, because your nonce is only um, uh, 32 uh, uh, bits. Let's see. So, all right. Um, so then the, the miner authorizes, um, and this is just a sending its uh, worker name so that uh, basically it's so that the shares that it's going to be sending later on are going to get credited to the right account. There's a password field, but it's kind of never used. Like pretty much um, no pools enforce it, maybe other than slushes, and um, you can omit it for some, entirely for some pools. Um, most pools will just accept an arbitrary value like X or one, two, three or something like that is usually what people use. Um, so then we have a stratum notify. Uh, this is where it's actually sending the job um, itself that the miner is gonna be hashing on. Oops, this is, okay. Um, so we have our job ID, um, the hash of the previous block and this can actually be, uh, one thing some pools do is uh, listen for this previous hash from other pools in order to, so that one, when one pool finds a block, the other pool can grab this previous hash and immediately start mining on top of it. Um, this is known as SPV mining, validationless mining. Um, and is, uh, because um, and it's pretty much bypassing all uh, validation, so you could actually pretty much send a, a uh, if a pool sent out a bad previous hash, um, other pools would potentially mine on it. Although they'll time out, they'll time that out and fall back after usually thirty seconds or so. Um, so we have our um, Coinbase one and Coinbase two. Oops. I don't know what I hit. Okay. 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 And then we have our uh, Merkle branches. So it's not sending all the, rather than sending all the transactions, it's just sending the uh, the uh, the Merkle uh, branches needed to uh, reconstruct your Merkle root. Um, and. Uh, and also the the uh, the block version as well, end version, um, and it will also send the network difficulty. So the miner, um, so you can see uh, when you find a share uh, that would result in a block, and also the scene for encoding. Um, and yeah, and then there's also a clean job. So like when a new block is uh, discovered on the network, um, the pool will send a clean jobs uh, oops, uh, with true, and um, that will tell the miner to flush any pending shares, basically, um, since those will be uh, stale. Um, and when the miner finds a job that meets the uh, uh, the difficulty, and that's a difficulty from at the beginning, not the network difficulty. Um, they will submit a share to the server, and then that if that if the server is able to validate that that share 
uh, meets the difficulty requirements and is not stale and so on, um, then the share will be credited to the pool account. And um, the credit is basically going to be your is uh, the w the way the pool calculates it will be share difficulty. Um, it'll use the share. It'll just take the share dif difficulty um, and credit that much for the share. And that's not the and that's the difficult and that's not the the actual true difficulty of the share. That's the difficulty that the um, the pool told the miner uh, to submit all shares uh, above. So if a share is um, very high dif uh, high difficulty and one's just barely above the difficulty of the pool set, those actually get credited the same to the account. Um, Yep. So how does a miner go specifically about finding a share? Um, it is uh, basically hashing the, uh, hashing on a block header, or um, it's doing hashes on, a, I'll go uh, here, essentially. Um, so you're basically, uh, the last thing is, is it, the, the last value is padding. Um, so this is uh, producing our block header to hash effectively. Um, and it's reconstructing uh, uh, the solve from the uh, subscription and uh, basically the subscription notifies that I showed earlier. Does that make sense? Yeah, thanks. Okay. And so the way the Stratum server works is it's um, going to be producing these notifies, which are, and uh, stratum templates, um, you and it, but it's going to be producing those notifies using GBT. So, getblock template was originally was also designed as a replacement for um, for getwork, but it wasn't ever used um, widely for pool mining because it's um, not that bandwidth efficient. You have to for getblock template you are sending all the transactions in the block rather than just that, um, uh, those Merkle branches. And because of that, say you wanted to mine a one megabyte block on, and, you're, and if your pool is using get block template, um, you, would, you would have every notify would be a megabyte to download versus just a small um, few kilobytes. Um, but uh, the Stratum server, which is um, typically either on the same uh, server as Bitcoin D or on a server on the same network, um, that's going to be requesting GetBlock template, but it's only going to be requesting it, it as if it's one miner to Bitcoin D, essentially. Um, and then it'll split it up to thousands of miners using it, uh, uh, thousands of these Stratum miners. Um, so that way, you're not having. You only have one server doing a get block template to Bitcoin D. Yep. So the pool is going to give you the header with single nonce in it, and then divvy up the, the nonce two values each miner is going to work on. Or is um, it's each the miner working on nonce one also? The extra nonce one. Basically, the pool is assigning a unique um, extra nonce one down to every miner, and the miner gets to choose their extra nonce two. Okay. Yeah. So every miner is getting a separate. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, and you can split it with uh, stratum proxies as well to further. Uh, that's probably more uh, more than I, I should go into though. Um, let's see. And uh, yeah, so the stratum servers are also responsible for validating that return shares um, are uh, valid and meet the difficulty requirement. So it's going to be doing that. Um, same hashing process basically as the miner, except it's not brute forcing it, it's just checking whatever they submitted. Um, and the Stratum server is also um, serializing a, for SegWit is serializing a witness commitment and inserting that into the generation transaction. And generation transaction is just another term for Coinbase transaction. Um, and that's basically the, um, Similar to other Merkle uh, Merkle root calculation. Let's see here. So there's a few different clients. CD Miner is 
pretty much the most common one you're going to see because um, most of the embedded hardware is going to be using it. Um, they're probably not going to be using this exact version. They're going to be using their own forks of it uh, with their own drivers. Some upstream their drivers to uh, the main CG Miner project, and some just maintain their own forks indefinitely. Um, then there was BFG Miner. Um, this was a fairly early fork of CG Miner that still supports GPU mining. So um, if you don't have an ASIC miner and you want to experiment with mining, that may be a good option. Um, CG Miner is going to re require an ASIC. It's effectively an ASIC controller. It used to support GPU mining, but it doesn't, any doesn't anymore. And BFG Miner also has a basic stratum proxy um, functionality, which acts as a client and a server, essentially. And then there's Slus's Stratum Proxy, and this isn't really used anymore, but in the early days um, when miners were mining, migrating from Getwork to Stratum, uh, if they pool only supported Stratum, but you only had a Getwork miner, um, you could use the Stratum Proxy to uh, still be able to mine. And then there's a CK pool, uh, also has a proxy mode that's similar to BFG miners, where it um, acts as a client and a server. Um, so here's some common pool software. Um, there's Slush's reference in Python, ULI pool, um, which is used by LEGS. Um, uh, there's CK pool, uh, which is used by a number of larger pools, um, rich in C. Uh, there's NOMP. Um, this one isn't really used much on the Bitcoin network, um, uh, but it's more common for altcoins. Um, and then there's BTC pool, uh, which is uh, used by BTC.com uh, and a number of other Chinese pools, um, and possibly some non-Chinese pools as well. And then there's pool payout methods. So there's a few different uh, ways that pools can calculate your reward from your shares, essentially. So there's pay per last and share, um, which basically pays uh, when, when a block is found, the pool looks back at its received shares, like say five N, uh, with N being the network difficulty, um, uh, worth of shares, uh, back. And then it'll reward it proportionally based off of that. But it's different from a act from a normal proportional because a proportional would reset every block find Well, um, pay per last in share is just looking back uh, regardless of how many blocks are found. Um, so a share can be credited multiple times essentially in that case. And there's pay per share. This is the most common one nowadays um, uh, where basically every share that's submitted um, is given a certain Bitcoin reward. And the difference between, so in terms of risk, um, pay per last in share, um, the miner uh, who's mining to the pool is taking most of the variance risk, um, while pay per share, it's the pool operator that's taking the variance risk. So if you get really, so if, if a pool is unlucky and it is doing pay per share, um, then the, it's going to be the pool operator that would be losing out, not the miner. There's some score based uh, um, payout methods, which are usually roughly similar to uh, in, in terms of risks are similar to pay per last and share. Um, and then there is uh pedo pool as well, which is a little interesting. So pedo pool has its own blockchain, essentially it's, um, 30 second, roughly block time. Uh, and it's paper last and share, but, uh, a share in, in pedo pool is um, a share that gets in the share chain. And there's a block finder bonus for this as well to discourage block withholding. Um, and PETA pool um, is not really used anymore. Um, the, uh, a major issue it has is dealing with um, the share chain updates basically. So every 30 seconds, there's a new share being added to the share chain. Um, and the miners have to flip their work. They have to flush jobs and uh, switch to that new share every 30 seconds versus if you're mining on the Bitcoin net, if you're mining on a normal pool, um, you're just uh, switching roughly every 10 minutes or so due to the 10-minute uh, block time of Bitcoin. Uh, is there a 
as far as you said, the 0.5% for <laughs> to prevent block withholding, is that because if I find acceptable, you know, jobs or whatever for my share, mm -hmm. that I would try to reconstruct the Merkle tree or something and, and mine it myself? Or what, you, you would... would Dis it's to discourage discarding of the just uh you, you can't like change once you have that nonce found you can't change anything in the block but you can just not submit it essentially so block withholding is you find a block finding share and you don't send it to the pool you just drop it so that would be block withholding and that would so in a if you're pplns um if you withhold if you do that and withhold a block you'll lose out some, and the other miners in the pool will also lose out. So this block finder bonus was added to help encourage miners not to uh, block withhold, since if they find a share, it's more valuable than a normal share, essentially, if they have a block finding share in P2Pool. Normally, a block finding share, um, like for if, if, a, if a miner is mining on a paper share pool, for instance, um, and a miner finds a block finding share, that share would not be rewarded any more than the uh, just any uh, any normal share that doesn't find a block. It would be uh, so the miner dropping that block finding share doesn't really impact them because the pool's paying out per share, and that share is not worth much. <laughs> but the pool operator would lose out a lot. So uh, paper share is definitely at risk of these block withholding attacks because it doesn't significantly impact the miner. Uh, mining on the pool, but it does impact the pool operator. So, and so there is a, this is the block withholding attack uh, details. Um, so these are very difficult to detect if you're a pool operator. There's um, at least intentional attacks because you have to get a, just statistical analysis is really the only way and you need a lot of shares to be able to get a high confidence interval that somebody's block withholding. Um, the block withholding attack cannot really be mitigated without a hard fork because the only way to, the way you'd mitigate a block withholding attack would be to add a blinding factor essentially um, to the, so that the miner is not able to know the true network difficulty of the share. Since the miner with the way, um, since the miner will always know the true net network difficulty of a share they find, they have the ability to drop it. If there's some blinding factor that hides the true difficulty um, and only the pool knows the true difficulty, um, then the miner wouldn't know which shares that would find blocks and then and thus they wouldn't know which ones to drop um, if to do a block withholding attack. Um, there's been a few posts on the mailing list on uh, by uh, I think Kevin Pan and Luke Jr. on how to mitigate on a potential method of mitigating this uh, via hard fork. Um, and let's see, there have been a number of block withholding incidents. Uh, some, probably most are unintentional. Um, some might not be. Uh, you, the, the unintentional ones are usually due to software or hardware bugs. So like, um, for instance, like a 32-bit uh, overflow on network difficulty, for instance. So like a miner is unable to submit, a, if say like a miner is unable to process a share with um, above, like I guess, two or like two billion or so uh, uh, difficulty, um, then they're essentially doing an unintentional block withhold since they will be unable to find any shares above network difficulty. But most of their shares uh, um, would be uh, found, just not any that find blocks. <laughs> um, and accidental block withholding can often be detected faster. It's depend, this depends highly on the specific bug. Um, so for instance, if it's a 32-bit over, uh, overflow, you can do a statistical analysis on if the share submitted above, like say, 1 billion uh, difficulty is, a, is in line with expected, basically. But this doesn't really work for an intentional attack because they would just uh, drop anything above network difficulty. They wouldn't like drop everything above um, like one billion diff. Uh, one billion diff. And then there's also DDoS attacks on pools. Um, this was com more common in the early days. It's there's multiple mitigation methods. Um, 
just uh, spinning up more servers is one. Yep. Um, potentially, I mean, so block withholding would potentially reduce the difficulty, um, would reduce the difficulty of the Bitcoin network, um, versus if they were not block withholding since there's less blocks being found. Um, but most of the time it would be probably somebody trying to cost somebody else money would likely be a reason behind that. Um, but yeah. Um, there's not much incentive for the individual miner to block withhold since they're not going to individually really earn much more. Is, is it likely that another pool would do like a paper share, like mine on another pool and then just block the pool? And it's, 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 it's possible, but if it's a public pool, it would be detectable since you can detect um, the generation transaction in Coinbase SIG of a pool over Stratum. So you, you, if, if, a, if a pool is proxy pool mining, essentially, acting as a proxy pool to another pool, um, you could connect to that pool and see that they were mining on uh, the pool, the attacking, the pool they're attacking uh, their, uh, their generation transaction, basically, their payout address and so on. Um, so... For yeah, if it was a public pool doing the attack, because since you could then connect to that public pool and see that it's proxy pool mining on the other pool, but if it's a private pool um, or private miner doing an attack, it'd be there'd not really be a good way to detect it other than this statistical analysis. Um, and Stratum itself is not particularly secure since it's unauthenticated effectively. Um, there was an incident where a VGP hijacking. Um, where uh, I believe it was a Canadian ISP was sending bad uh, BGP routes um, and would basically briefly redirect uh, the some miners through their uh, through their routers um, and would then what they were doing is they were issuing this client reconnect command telling so even even though the miner would only connect to them for like a brief like few seconds or so um, that was all that was needed because they could just tell the miner switch to this other server and it would just and then it would permanently stay on that other server until the software is restarted on the miner so I think they were mostly attacking all coins but um, yeah this is uh, this is an issue because stratum doesn't really do authentication there is TLS support in like BFG miner but it's effectively unused no pools support it um, as far as I'm aware. At least none of the public pools that you can mine on. Um, and there's DNS. Uh, you, um, DNS cache poisoning is always a potential issue since there's no, uh, there's no TLS. Um, and cloud host uh, interception. So the, this is a theoretical issue with um, pools since a lot of the pools, especially in China, are going to be using the same uh, host, uh, just Aliyun, Alibaba, which are, they're basically the AWS of China. Um, so a lot of, probably most uh, pools are going to be in China are going to be uh, hosted on them. Let's see. And I think that's about it. Um, any other questions or anything else I should go over in more detail? It's a stale share chain. Uh, it's a stale. Sh uh, it, it's not so much a stale block, so much a stale share. So, well-connected peer pool miners are do get a significant advantage because their share uh, orphan rates are going to be much lower. And even though shares don't always uh, result in block fines, um, they uh, they still have significant. Um, Value compared to a compared to a share, just your average share submitted to a normal pool, because they're only found every thirty seconds by the entire P2 pool network. It has a, a similar sort of uh, variable difficulty uh, or changing difficulty that the normal Bitcoin network has. So, I mean, is that a problem that's solvable with fiber or compact, compact 
Probably not because there is that side might be able to be, but the bigger issue is the uh, the mining side software and that you have to flush uh, you have to flush buffers and start working on new work every thirty seconds for all these uh, miners, and often they don't handle that too well. Since having to have them because when they're n normally operating the Bitcoin network, they're only flushing uh jobs every 10 minutes or so and if you're on peter pool you have to do it every 30 seconds or so um that is yeah one issue um there and, and of course that other issue with the uh with the well-connected miners having a advantage uh, what is the mining cost of one What does it cost to mine one Bitcoin? I'm not really sure. It varies a lot. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure. And, and like power costs, hardware costs, and I mean, uh, I don't really know. I'd be guessing. I mean, right now it's, I don't know, probably a few thousand um, at least. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, it, it just varies a lot by the operational costs of um, the miner and when they got the hardware. There's a lot. There's a lot of factors in that. Um, um, it it can happen unintentionally because in order to unintentionally block withhold, all you need to do is your drop shares. Um, drop high difficulty shares. So if you have a bug, for instance, in integer overflow, like a 32-bit integer overflow, um, where the miner is unable, to, uh, the mining hardware is unable to process shares above a certain diff, that's effectively an unintentional block withhold. And this has happened uh, multiple times, actually. Um, uh, I've detected some myself. Um, Allegius in the early days uh, had, det had, um, had detected one. Um, and a, and BTC Guild, uh, and yeah, uh, there's been some more recent ones uh, on like Slush Pool. Kano has detected some. Probably, probably most pools have had these. Um, just not all have detected them. Um, it's hard to say how prevalent they are. Um, to, due to the difficulty of detecting. Um, I suspect. Due to, I suspect more of the recent ones were unintentional, but it's hard to say since a lot of, often the, the block withholder, if you try and contact them, they just won't respond and they'll leave your, and just leave your pool. Because usually the pool operator will halt payments. Um, sometimes it depends on the situation though. Some have responded and fixed their issues. Is Stratum the only uh, mining protocol or there are alternatives? I mean, get, Yeah, there's, I mean, the, uh, I'd be, so, like, these are the, there's multiple stratum clients here, um, and, uh, uh, yeah, there's, the, well, when stratum was developed, uh, get block template was kind of the alternative, um, but it wasn't feasible for pooled mining, it was, um, because it, you can, you can have an unlimited amount of hash power on a single get block template. The issue with it was, is that the, the templates were large so that if you were a pool, you'd have to, you need massive amounts of bandwidth. For instance, if a thousand miners were connected to you, you need to be able to push out um, a gigabyte basically uh, within under, with, uh, under a second um, to all those miners at once versus Stratum uses far less bandwidth and where that's not really an issue. Um, it's hard to say. I mean, uh, if everyone is able to do it with GPUs, then that would open up more potential attack vectors to, um, for instance, botnets would be a major issue. And, and, it, and, and in the early days, a lot of mining uh, was botnet 
was botnets mining. Um, after, after everything moved to ASICs, the botnet started mining altcoins <laughs> in general. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, that's one issue. Mm. Um, yeah, and the miners then wouldn't have as much incentive to uh, not attack Bitcoin potentially if they're running on GPU hardware that can be used for something else. If you're if you have a piece of hardware um, that can only be used to mine Bitcoin, you're essentially you're invested in the success of Bitcoin essentially versus if you're just some uh, if you just have a GPU and you wanted to make a few extra dollars, um, you, you're that's not the main thing you'd likely be using the GPU for. Um, so that is an issue. Um, so I think. Overall, having dedicated hardware probably makes things more secure significantly. Any other questions? Mm. Or anything else I should go over? Okay. I hmm? Oh. My email, yeah, yeah, I should put that up. The the Merkle the miner isn't able to change the uh, isn't able to really change the Merkle tree. The pool would then just reject the share. You can't really um, you can't like change it. Mm, you can't uh, you can't change the uh, you, uh, you're mining on a specific like generation transaction, so the you can't change the payout address without um, making the share invalid for the pool. Essentially, the pool will not accept a share that would allow you to do that. Basically, yeah, so, okay, so the base is already, so that makes sense. yeah, the pool the pools yeah the pool's forcing the miner the miner is able to change like the extronauts to. Um, and end time, uh, like miners often will roll end time uh, to get some extra, um, uh, some extra work without having to, uh, without having to uh, change the action on two. Since changing action on two is more expensive uh, for the controller computationally than changing like end time. You can also change end version too, but that's probably a bad idea since then you have lots of weird version blocks. Uh, improper pools, uh, pools doing improper share val. There has been issues uh, with bugs that, I don't know if they've been exploited. There's been bugs that would have allowed a miner to say, submit a duplicate share. I think it was something with like, uh, there was one with uh, capitalization um, where y you could submit the lowercase version of, I believe the job ID and then the uppercase version and both of those would get counted. And you could vary this as well and get a lot more shares. That was an issue a number of pools were vulnerable to since uh, I think Slush's reference implementation was vulnerable to that one. Um, it was fixed, and I don't think Slush was using the reference implementation uh, himself. Uh, but I think probably Ghash at one point, I think they had mentioned it was, they were vulnerable. Um, probably a few others. So, so big, so they they have the ability to technically, um, but typically they won't. Um, typically, they'll just blindly they'll they'll take the block template from Bitcoin D and 
they're not going to be doing transaction selection on that typically. The most you'll really ever see is potentially dropping some transactions to shrink the block template and that, uh, to shrink the block size. Um, and that was generally only used for cases where the pool was doing generation transaction based payouts. So the generation transaction, you can actually pay it out to like a whole bunch of different people at once and that takes up more space. Um, so if you're doing payouts with the generation transaction, you potentially uh, would um, need to shrink the block size to fit that generation transaction. Otherwise, you'll get an invalid block. Um, but that's not used. Generation transaction payouts are not too common since there is more controller overhead. Um, the, I believe the more um, the more outputs you have in your generation transaction. So if they want to alter the selection process for the transaction, could it be based based on maybe a time base or time base when they received it or reverse? You, you typically mod, you typically modify policy by patching Bitcoin Core and modifying the settings there, not by changing the pool settings. So the Stratum server is more or less just its job is more to convert the get block template templates into uh, the Stratum templates that the uh, the end hardware is able to mine on. So it has to be a Bitcoin D um, yeah, that'd be the typical easiest way of doing it because trying to re-implement any sort of consensus logic within a uh, Stratum server is going to be rather difficult since you have to check like ancestors and stuff like that. And it's not, that's complicated. <laughs> and uh, there's no point in, generally not much point in recreating that. Anyone else? Okay. I'll put up a Yep, so there's my email in case um, anyone uh, has any questions or wants to get in touch um, with anything mining related. Um, we, uh, I do pretty much everything from mining farm operations to pools uh, for my job. Uh, and also do uh, a lot of testing with um, networks like Fiber. Um, so Fiber might be something else I could go over. Um, so Fiber, uh, most of the pools are connected to the fiber network and um, it speeds up block propagation significantly um, between the pools uh, and uses a compression scheme uh, and uh, forward error correction um, to more quickly get over the Chinese firewall um, since that's gonna be the major, uh, the major propagation bottleneck you'll see. Um, once once blocks are in China, they generally propagate pretty quickly, though, um, since most of the pools are pretty close to each other. Um, anybody else? All right, I guess that's it. I guess. <laughs>